every now and then, not too often, I get an email from a company asking me if I want to do a review for one of their products. And I always say, well, why not? So they send me this one. This is the Digital Life U2 Audio 7.1. Now, Digital Life is a brand that you've probably never heard of, but it's made by a company in China called Flycount Tech. And they were kind enough to send me this little device, the U2 Audio 7.1. And well, it has everything that a gamer could probably want. It has a headphone or app output. It has a stereo mic input or two mono mics. It also has a complete 7.1 output. Well, if it that doesn't make you excited, I don't know what does. I have to mention of course that I got this product for absolutely free, but there were no strings attached. It is shipped in a small box and besides the device itself there's also a USB 2.0 cable. There's also a tiny little manual, but as usual I don't read the manual, manuals are for suckers. The device itself is also tiny and feels kind of plasticky, but it has all the jack plugs that you would need to attach all the speakers. There are some buttons on the top and two LEDs, but the functionality isn't clear yet. Maybe I should read the manual after all. After finishing the lengthy manual itself, I found out that one LED is for the activity itself, if it's attached, and the other one if, is if the microphone itself is active or not. So without further ado, let's head inside to see what the specifications of this little device are. On the inside the device is well empty, I mean it's just a codec and some capacitors. No op amps, no separate digital to analog converter, no analog to digital converter, no nothing. The codec is this CM6206 and according to C Media, this is a highly integrated single USB audio solution. And what else does the datasheet say? Let's just pick out the relevant stuff. It's a USB 2.0 device. It has SCMC, which is an ye olden implementation of DRM. It supports Dolby over SPDIF, but I don't know what kind of Dolby. As I said before, it has 8 channels or 7.1 with 16 bits resolution. It has an earphone buffer, which sort of acts like an op amp, but it is integrated into the codec itself. And last but not least, it has the C Media Value Added Patent Software Driver. I'm really curious what that is. At first glance, there are no drivers needed because, well, hey, it's a USB audio class spec one, so Windows will identify the device itself and install all the necessary drivers if needed. So let's rock and roll, ready for the listening sessions. The name Digital Life isn't mentioned anywhere, it's just a USB sound device as is the microphone. Sorry for the Dutch in here. Now I'm always complaining that the bitrate and frequency, sampling frequency are, uh, well, should be way better than 16 bits and 44,1 or 48 kilohertz. But in this little device, there's an ID behind this because this device is mainly targeted at uh, home desktop music entertainment and home 5.1 and 7.1 movie entertainment. Now, HD movies and CDs are always recorded at 44,1 or 48 kilohertz, so there is no need for a sampling rate to be higher or uh, better than that. But it was in the year 2000. Now it's 2022 and well you can at least expect it to be of a bit better quality. But hey, it all comes down to the listening sessions and Rightmark Audio Analyzer, of course, but what do the listening sessions actually sound like? Now, when I plug the device in, sorry, my headphone into the little device on the part where it says headphones, there was no sound. So I digged a bit deeper and I plugged it into the front out, front out and there was audio, woohoo. So I had to switch from the front output to the headphone output. 
but there was no button on the device itself and also in the tiny little Windows device drivers, you couldn't switch them anywhere. But then I have a trick up my sleeve because I know that for this device, there are drivers from C Media themselves. So then I installed those drivers. So before we get to the listening sessions, now let's head over to the driver interface. And then you have this, a driver interface that we've seen so many other times in so many other devices. If you want to set it to your headphones, there's a trick that you need. And that's one of the major downsides. I would have liked if there's some jack sensing in the device itself, or maybe that um, there's a little button on there that you can change it from these front speakers to the speakers, it's, uh, sorry, to the headphones. But there's no such thing. So you will always need to install the drivers. Let's head over to the drivers. If you right click on here, you can change all the different settings, the volume control, speaker settings, sampling rate, doesn't go any further than 48, and all the other things, environmental effects, speaker shifting, bass, well, all those stuff that I don't even bother using because it's crap. If you want to change it to your headphones, and this is something of a little neat trick that not a lot of people know, you go to speaker settings and then you change it to headphone. Otherwise, it just won't work. And there we have it. And here you can also see that you can change the headphone settings to 96 kilohertz. A nice little thing. So do I like this driver interface? Well, to be honest, I don't. I think it looks really old, like from 1995 or with, with Windows 98. Uh, but as I say in so many other videos, it gets the job done. You can change all these settings that you would want. The sampling rate for the microphone. You can even have your Xeer sing with some magic voices. Oh, come on, people. Your line-in settings and everything else. It's more than ad adequate. So it gets the job done. Do I like it? No, I don't. So after getting everything correctly set up in the C Media driver interface, you should mention that over there, Digital Life or Fly Can Tech. But besides all that, I could start my listening sessions and I was really wondering how does this sound card actually sound like? To put it very mildly, it was indeed very bad. I mean, it sounded like it was underwater. I mean, muffled speakers or 1940 speakers. Uh, the soundstage was uh, very narrow. It wasn't pleasant to listen to. The basses lacked any kind of oomph or depth. The middles were raw and sharp, as were the highs. And the instruments were not defined at all. It was just a big blob of sound that was spewed out by my speakers. Sorry, my headphones. Now, I tried several different speakers, but they all had the same results. Of course, I also checked if all the uh, interesting effects that the Xeer software offers are disabled. And they were all disabled, so it had to be the device itself. So overall, if I have to give this device a rating, at least for the listening sessions, well, I give it a poor at best. So after those very interesting results from Rightmark Audio Analyzer, I was very interested what would those results look like in Rightmark Audio Analyzer, and here they are. At first glance, these results aren't that bad. It's not the best that I've ever seen, but certainly not the worst. Overall, it gets an average. The frequency response is very good, which is interesting because the experience I had with the listening sessions, well, they would have shown up here. The rest are some averages and two pores. The stereo crosstalk is, like any other single chip solution, poor. There is one thing that I would like to note here, something that's interesting to mention, and that is the possibility to add two microphones, not four, two microphones in there, or one stereo mic. Now that's an option that's, well, not usually there. Usually it's a mono uh, single chip device that converts the microphone to audio, and that's what, well, when you play with Discord, is all that you need. But here you can have two microphones. Now, that may be very interesting if it's your first steps in the uh, music industry or recording industry and you want to have two microphones. So that's interesting to see. Mm. 
So, and now for my conclusion. Now, when writing this conclusion, I was thinking, okay, what kind of user scenario does Fly Contact have for uh, this little device? And they themselves, they say, uh, this device is targeted at people with laptops to enjoy 7.1 sound, and it fills the gap where major brands fall short. And then I thought, okay, is this an upgrade for your audio? Um, no, definitely not. It's even a step down. So maybe for those people with a laptop who want to have 7.1, I just cannot imagine why anyone would want to have that. Um, just don't, because it's not an improvement. Um, okay, if you want to have 7.1 sound desperately, it may be an option, and it's a cheap option for that matter. But I don't even see why it is an upgrade. Is this device any good for gaming? Well, absolutely not. I mean, the audio was horrible when playing several games with my friends and even the microphone was mono, but it was displayed at the wrong channel and everything and I just couldn't get it to work properly. So my friends could only hear me from the right side or the left side and it was really annoying. So gamers, eh, no. And then you have the last category, and that's the people who are making their first steps in the music industry. Maybe this is something for them. And that's the, uh, probably the only thing that I could think of, that people will want to have this, and that's the stereo mic input. But besides that, I don't see any user scenario to get this device. So do I recommend this little device, the Digital Life U2 Audio 7.1? No, I don't. Sorry, Fly Contact. So, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye!